Today we're going to look at an expression related to one of my favorite number sequences, and that's the sequence of numbers known as the harmonic numbers. So in particular, we'll show that the sum as k goes from 1 to n of minus 1 to the k plus 1 times the binomial coefficient n choose k times 1 over k is the nth harmonic number. Now you might say, well, what's the nth harmonic number? Well, the nth har harmonic number, which we will denote by h sub n, is the sum 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third all the way up to 1 over n. So it's a partial sum of the harmonic series, which is known to diverge. In fact, it's like one of the smallest series that diverges. Now, what are some nice facts about harmonic numbers? Well, they're kind of a discrete version of the logarithm. And there are a couple of different discrete versions of the logarithm, but this is definitely one kind of related to derivatives and antiderivatives. So let's notice that the natural log of n can be written using the fundamental theorem of calculus as the integral from 1 to n of 1 over x dx. But that can be approximated by the sum as k goes from 1 to n of 1 over k, which is exactly equal to this nth harmonic number. So in some ways, this nth harmonic number is approximating this natural log of n. Now, of course, the quality of that approximation will depend on the n. Another thing that is worth pointing out is that the derivative with respect to x of natural log of x is 1 over x, but then the so-called discrete derivative or forward difference operator applied to h sub n is 1 over n plus 1. So there we've got kind of a duality between the continuous logarithm, this natural log of x, and this harmonic number, or this like sequence of harmonic numbers and the discrete derivative. Now that we've reviewed what the harmonic numbers are, as well as motivated some reasons they might be interesting, let's look at our main goal. So now looking at our main result, we'll start with this sum and we will interpret it as an integral. So the first thing that I'd like to do is take this minus one to the k plus one and I'll write it as minus one to the k times minus one. And in fact, along the way, I'll factor one of those minus signs out of the whole thing. So I'll write this as minus the sum as k goes from 1 up to n, and then we'll have n choose k, and then I'll have minus x to the k power over k, and then that's going to be evaluating x from 0 to x equals 1. So notice if we evaluate that at x equals 0, we just get 0. But if we evaluate it at x equals 1, we retrieve exactly what we started with. And the reason I wrote this is I like to think of this as like a zeroth integral. And I can take the derivative of what's going on here and turn this into a first integral. Again, using this fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, so let's do that. So taking the derivative of this with respect to x, and like I said, taking that zeroth integral and transforming it into a first integral gives us the following. So we'll have minus the sum as k goes from 1 up to n. We still have our binomial coefficient n choose k. Now taking the derivative will leave me with minus x to the k minus 1. Notice the k here cancels the k here when it's come down. And then I have the integral from 0 to 1 dx. Okay, so again, like I said, that's just applying the fundamental theorem of calculus. Okay, now where do we want to go from here? Well, since I've got a finite sum, I can easily exchange the order of summation and integration, and that's exactly what I want to do. So I'll rewrite this as uh, minus the integral from 0 up to 1 of Let's see, the sum as k goes from 1 up to n of, well, I'll have this binomial coefficient n choose k, and then I'll have this minus x to the k minus 1. But since k minus 1 is like a little tricky to work with, I'll write this as minus x to the k, and I'll put a 1 over x out here. And then I've got my dx over here. So after rewriting some things, this transforms pretty clearly into this term right here. Okay, 
But now let's look at this, which I'm putting an overline of orange on. And notice it almost looks like a sum which could be simplified using a binomial expansion. All that it's missing is a k equals zero term. So in the next step, I want to add in the k equals zero term, and then I'll also subtract the k equals zero term. So notice the k equals zero term is equal to the number one. So in fact, what I'll do here is I'll add one and I will also subtract one. But let's keep in mind that we've got this minus sign here. So in fact, I'll loop this minus one in with the sum that's built there. Okay, so let's do that step. So this is gonna leave me with the integral from zero to one. And then after that, I'll have this one over x just like before. And then I'll have one minus the sum as k goes from zero up to n of n choose k times minus x to the k. And then I have dx around that whole thing. Okay, so here's the one that I added in. And then the one that I subtracted is tied up in this k equals zero term. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, I think. Now, let's take this stuff which I'll overline in yellow and notice that I can use binomial expansion formula to rewrite that fairly easily. That's exactly equal to one minus x to the nth power. So in the end, that's gonna leave me with the integral from zero to one of one minus one minus x to the nth power all over x dx. Okay, so now let's bring that integral up here and then we'll keep going. So on the last board, we did some calculations that took our goal sum and transformed it into the following integral. Now we'd like to evaluate this integral using integration by parts, and hopefully that will lead us towards the harmonic number like we have over here on the left-hand side, or that's the right-hand side of the equation. Okay, so let's do integration by parts on this integral. So that means we need to set up a u and a dv. So I'll set my u to be equal to that numerator, so that's one minus one minus x to the n power. So that makes du equal to, let's see, that will be n times one minus x to the n minus one dx. So let's notice that a couple of minus signs canceled out there. Okay. And then my dv will be equal to one over x dx, which means v is equal to the natural log of x. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. So we'll have v times u or u times v. So that'll be one minus one minus x all to the n power all times natural log of x evaluated from zero to one and then we have to subtract v du. So we've got this minus n out in front of the whole thing that I'll take out of the integral. So minus n, and then the integral from zero to one of, now this will be natural log of x times one minus x to the n minus one dx. So we're left with something like this. Okay, so now let's look at this first thing. So if we plug in one, natural log of one is zero, so that's not problematic, that just goes to zero. But notice if we plug in zero, natural log of zero is minus infinity. Actually, that's a limit occurring there, but the limit is towards minus infinity. Another thing that we'd like to notice is that this is all powers of x. Notice there's no constant term in this thing that I've overlined in orange. So this will be n times x and then minus something times x squared and then so on and so forth. So regardless to say, we have x times natural log of x, x squared times natural log of x and so on and so forth. And then you can use L'Hopital's rule to show that each of those will go to zero when we take the limit. That is, the fact that we're using here is the fact that the limit as x goes to zero of x to the k times the natural log of x is equal to zero if k is bigger than or equal to one. And that's pretty easy to check with L'Hopital's rule. So that means that this entire integral or this entire evaluation here just leaves us with zero. 
And then we'll take the second integral and perform a change of variables. And that change of variables will be t equals one minus x. That means that dt is equal to minus dx. Okay. Let's also notice when x is equal to zero, t is equal to one, and then vice versa. When x is equal to one, t is equal to zero. So that will have the effect of swapping the bounds of integration. Okay, so in the end, that leaves me with n times the integral from one up to zero of t to the n minus one times the natural log of one minus t dt. Notice that this minus sign attached to the dt swapped this minus n to a plus n. But in fact, what I'll do from here is I'll take this n and I'll bring it inside so that it's attached to the t to the n minus one. I'll also swap these bounds back so that it's zero to one and multiply by a minus to do that. Okay, then what do we wanna do from here? I think our best bet is to do another round of integration by parts. And that's really motivated by the fact that this term right here is the derivative of t to the n. So that motivates us to set dv equal to n times t to the n minus one dt. Okay, so that's my dv. And then I'll set u equal to the natural log of one minus t. And then I'll let you calculate the v and the du terms. Those are pretty straightforward here. And then since this integral is improper at one, notice we get the natural log of one minus one, which is zero. I'll set this up as a limit as that upper bound goes to one from up below. So we're doing a couple of steps right here, but I think it's okay. We have the limit as b goes to one from below of minus t to the n times the natural log of one minus t evaluated from zero to b. So that's what we get from our u, v part of our integration by parts. And then after that, we have minus the integral from zero up to b of t to the n over one minus t dt. And that's from our v du. Okay, and then all of this is grouped together right here. Okay, so that's looking good. Uh, maybe the one last thing that I'll do on this board before moving to the next is I'll add one or I'll add zero to this numerator here. And I'll do that by subtracting one and adding one. So this will subtract one and add one. But that's gonna take this integrand and break it into pieces. So that'll break us into plus the integral from zero to b of, let's see, t to the n minus one over t minus one, where I just went ahead and took the minus sign and I had it flip that one minus t to t minus one. And then we'll have minus the integral from zero to b of one over one minus t dt. And that's from the plus one. So the minus one and the plus one come from different places, but keeping in mind that they all descend attached to this minus sign, I think it's okay. So let's bring this line up and then we're actually almost done. So this is where we ended up before. So we had two pieces of our integral that were improper. So I grouped those together. And then one which is actually not improper. It seems improper at the beginning, but just by division of polynomial rules, we can take this t to the n minus one over t minus one and write it as one plus t plus t squared plus all the way up to t to the n minus one, which will be extremely helpful for our last step. Okay, so now let's focus on what's going on here with this limit. So we'll have the limit as b goes to one from below. Now notice if we plug zero into this, everything cancels because we get the natural log of one. So we just need to plug b into this, leaving us with one minus b to the n times the natural log of one minus b. But now let's note that this term right here factors as one minus b times some other stuff. So I'll just put an orange box for that other stuff. The important part is that other stuff is well behaved as B approaches one from below. 
And then we've essentially got this something times the natural log of something as that something is approaching zero, which we saw earlier. And we mentioned that that limit was equal to zero. So that's why this whole thing trends off towards zero, which just leaves us this last term over here, which like we mentioned before, can be simplified by that polynomial. So let's see, in the end, our goal sum is equal to the integral from zero to one of one plus t plus t squared plus all the way up to t to the n minus one dt. But now we can take the antiderivative of that, that'll leave us with t plus one half t squared plus one third t cubed all the way up to one over n times t to the n, evaluate that from zero to one. But pretty clearly, evaluating that from zero to one and then subtracting will give us this one plus half plus third all the way up to one over n. In other words, it will give us our nth harmonic number. But now check it out. We started at this term over here, which is the left-hand side of our identity, and we ended with this harmonic number, which was the right-hand side of our identity, which finishes this thing off. And that's a good place to stop. Thanks for watching and sticking around until the end of the video. And since you're here, don't forget to gently press that like button, subscribe, ring the bell, and select all notifications to never miss a video. If you wanna get your name in the credits like you see here, access the live seminar series, review videos before release, and more, go to patreon.com slash michaelpenmath and become a Patreon member today. If you want full ad-free course content, subscribe to my second channel, Math Major. I've got courses on linear algebra, complex analysis, and proof writing, among several others. And that's everything. Bye.